You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. and discover the tools needed to find your life-fulfilling purpose. This is Live Without Limits with host Davida Shensky. Davida will discuss how our personalities and careers can fit together or how to adapt your personality for your career. So please welcome the host of Live Without Limits, Davida Shensky. I'm your host, Davida Shinsky. You're listening to Live Without Limits. We're coming to you live from BBM and TuneIn Radio. Today, we're going to talk about things you would tell your younger self about starting your own business. One thing I can remember is back when I was taking the, or a member of the Georgia chapter of the Georgia Speakers, or wait a minute, the National Speakers Association. One thing they had in their news newsletter that came out was an article that was there that if I knew now, or if I knew then what I knew now, then what we're going to talk today is what you know now and how you would approach your younger self and tell it to yourself. So the first thing we're going to talk about is how to create a plan and follow it. Creating a well thought out business plan to start with. These initial steps may seem pointless to some, but it's strongly advisable to spend time on your business plan, putting it down on paper. Once you get Get it down to doing that. You realize the gaps in your idea and conclude with a more concrete plan for your business going forward, especially financially. Back in 2012, when we had finalized only the idea of Prop Shop 24, we spent the next six months creating our business plan and budgets, reaching out to international brands, getting our registration and paperwork in place, sales tax, company registration, import licenses, and whatnot. Thankfully, these processes are now much easier. We built a strong base before receiving our first order. And when we did, thanks to the foundation, we were able to execute operations smoothly. Without a business plan, you have no guidance to plan or plan to follow. You don't know what niche your business should sell in. And I have a great story that really fits that well. I've worked closely with someone that I know that writes business plans, and he referred a client of his to me. Why? This was someone who decided that they were going to sell the paraphernalia for that people use with marijuana. Well, you have the pipe shops that people can go to. But guess what? She had no idea how she was going to reach her client, much less who her client was, because her idea was to do it through a mail order business and carry the stuff in her garage. But guess what? She had no idea who her niche was. She just expected everyone to be her customer. And you really shouldn't do that because guess what? There was a niche that she could have 
reached and made big sales because you have the older generation who cannot get out to go to the pipe stops and yet for health reasons they are prescribed marijuana. So why not look at that as her niche because she was doing a mail order product where someone could go online and purchase her products and yet she had no idea what to do. Here's another thing to do. Recently, I had to get a new handbag and I initially bought the one I had from eBags online and I wanted to replace that bag because the handle was starting to tear. So all I did was go online and order it. And because I already knew what it was that I ordering, all I had to do was tie it into what the name of the bag was. Because once I did that, then it was smooth sailing on repurchasing exactly what I had before. So always remember, when you are looking at an industry, you want to do the research. Why? Because you want to know who is being underserved that your product or service could help because that, even though that's a small niche within an industry, it's still an industry that needs to be served and still purchase those products. So it's up to you to find out how you can reach them. And some of the best ways to do that is to go on Google and actually put in to the search bar the industry that you're looking at and then research your competitors. See exactly what they're doing and who they're servicing. Then go back and research to find out even to dig deeper to find out who is not being served. What industry within that industry can you serve? And almost every industry that you're in, whether it's health and wellness, whether it's weight loss, there is a niche that is always open to your services. It's up to you to find it, and it's up to you to figure out how you can reach that group of people. And in my case, what I have done was that I realized when I first went to start my business and I was looking to put together a business plan and I went to school that I realized that they understood the importance of starting a business, but they didn't understand the niche that I was in, which was someone with a disability who didn't have the opportunity to go out and work for any length of time where I was able to build up a savings and totally establish myself with A1 credit. Therefore, I could, in essence, because I was more in the service industry as opposed to selling products, that if you figure out that in the 80s and the 90s, you had to be able to sell a physical book because, and to get a book published, you had to be able to, if you were going to self-publish, pay the publisher because if you're an unknown commodity, publishing companies are not going to take the chance on you to sell your products. Therefore, you had to figure out a different way to put yourself out there and get people to know who you are. I'm Davida Shinsky. This is Live Without Limits. 
And we're on BBM and TuneIn Radio. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 B.C. when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3,000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Welcome back. I'm Davina Shinsky. This is Live Without Limits, and we're on BBM and TuneIn Radio. Stay tuned and focused. One of the biggest mistakes entrepreneurs make is giving up too easily before the numbers in the bank or getting demotivated because of teething problems in the early stages. One thing you should know about entrepreneurship is that it's never going to be easy. The most important thing is to believe in yourself, your idea, and to be patient. Follow your passion and have faith. Success will come. A business plan can help you plan out your expenditures for checks and balances so you don't have to give up to early for fear of loss of everything. Learn how to focus in on your goals. Write them down, then break them down into daily activities so you can see your success along the way. Do not put pressure on yourself to create a masterpiece. Just create something visibly striking and enjoy the creative process As you go, feel them rather than write out your goals in a top line way. Write at least a paragraph on how it feels to achieve your goal. Understand them. Take action. Share them. The best thing that you can understand is how to set goals. And if you... And the biggest problem that some people have when it comes to being an entrepreneur is they're out there alone. They don't have the family support. That's why it's best to get yourself a coach. Why? Because the coach is there to help you. They'll help you put together a plan of action on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, even a monthly basis. But what you do is you meet weekly. And in those weekly discussions, you talk about what it is that you did that week. What were your goals? Did you accomplish them? Did you do what you needed to do on a daily basis? And then the next, the last thing you talk about is what you're going to do for the next week and plan that out. Get it down to the detail. 
this way with the support systems there. You're not likely to give up too soon. You're willing to see the progress that you're making. The problem is that people have goals and they don't break them down to a daily activity so they don't see the success. So what happens? They end up feeling like they're so overwhelmed trying to reach that end goal and because they're not looking at the progress that they're making on a daily basis, then what happens? They literally get so scared that the money will run out because they have not budgeted correctly. And here's a story that I remember about setting a goal and reaching a goal, that it was a grandfather and his grandson, and they were going out to plant. And the little boy said to him, it's such a distance, I don't think I can do it. So what did the grandfather do? He told him, turn around so that your back ended and you did not see the end goal so that as you're planting along the way, you can literally see how far you've come. That way, when you get to your goal at the end of the road and you look back, you won't have seen all the way you've come until you got to your goal. So this is what we want you to look at is remember, a goal is something that can be a I, I plan. It can be, what if as an entrepreneur, you have a germ of an idea? You ever watch Shark Tank when many of these people are going for financing, they've already actually created their prototype. They've even gotten some sales, but they realize that it, they need an investment of some kind to actually put it into a bigger realm. So what they do is they have to figure out what they're gonna do and how they're gonna plan it and they really have to have it so well planned that when they go before the, the people who are the investors, that they can literally lay out every step of the plan that they are working on. Because what does that do? That allows them to create the picture. If you ever notice when a speaker stands in front of you to motivate you, they've created such a picture of you reaching your goal that you have literally bought into it. That is what you need to be able to do when you get it from where you are to where you want to be and understand how you can take the germ of an idea and build it up and create it and lay it out. This is the purpose of what a business plan does for you. It helps you look at it. It helps you lay it out step by step. It helps you first look at who your team is that's going to help you with building your business how much money you have to invest in it, and how much you need from the investors. And once you start making sales, what's the projected income? You literally, whether you go before the shock tank or whether you go before a bank looking for investment from the bank, you literally have to have everything laid out and planned down to its smallest detail. And by understanding how that detail can benefit you, then 
it helps you so that you are not going to give up too soon, but you will be able to look at everything that you've done and how you can create the success that you are expecting. You're listening to Live Without Limits. We're coming to you live from BBM and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back, we'll be talking about how to establish a long-term network of trust. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia daly Lipe is a renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia daly Lipe's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Welcome back. I'm your host, Davida Shinsky. You're listening to Live Without Limits, and we're coming to you live from BBM and TuneIn Radio. Establish a long-term network of trust. While your business may be your brainchild, you will not always be able to function without an equally enthusiastic and dedicated team of people. When starting out a new business, you must ensure that slowly and steadily you establish a hand-picked team of individuals who understand your vision and work in tandem every day to help you achieve the targets laid out for them. It is very important that you create an inclusive environment to encourage all members of the team to contribute to both individuals as well as the company. Can you grow together organically? Additionally, find a mentor, someone who gives you sound advice, someone you can call for their opinion or important decisions, and someone who can help you see the light when you lose track. It takes a team to make anything work. This is where a business plan mission statement is important because then everyone is on the same page on the goals of the company. A mission statement is a short statement of an organization's purpose, what its overall goal is, identifying the goal of its operations, what kind of product or service it provides, its primary customers or market, and its geographical region of operation. Now, one thing that we need to think about is a mission statement. If you walk into any cleaners, they will often have the mission statement on the wall. But if you work for a corporation, part of the manual that they give you 
has a mission statement of the corporation involved with it. Have you ever listened to some of these advertisers? They usually, when they're promoting the company somewhere, there's a mission or purpose of who the company is going to serve. And a benefit of creating a mission statement is that it gives and establishes a business's underlying purpose beyond the simple goal of making profit. The purpose can help guide the types of products and services the company offers, as well as the company's policies. For example, an environmentally conscious entrepreneur might include in his mission statement that his company will not use environmentally harmful production methods. One example is Amazon. They started out selling hard and softback books, expanded to selling all types of products, then Amazon Prime Studios to produce movies and streaming television shows. Grocery stores, and also one of the things that they've now looking at doing is they want independent country companies that they can franchise with who can do the deliveries for them. And they're also looking at drones as a way of delivering their products. So if you take Amazon and you look at how it's expanded, it had to have some type of business. Why? Because if you, he had no idea what directions he was going to go in, would he have been able to grow at the pace that he has? Because remember, he was an online business. And who was his competition? Barnes and Nobles and some of these other stores that you could go in where you could buy the books, you could buy the paperbacks. Even he was competing against libraries where you had people who had paperback books. And if they didn't want the paperback books, what would they do? They would give it to the library. And the library would sell them for 25 cents, 50 cents for people who were looking. So if you don't understand how you can take your business and actually put into it a mission or a purpose for your business, then you have no way of getting getting it to a point where, say, if you're in an elevator, what is the first thing they tell you? You need to meet someone and tell them within 30 seconds of riding up that elevator exactly what the mission of your company is. Why? Because, say, I tell someone that... I'm going to help people find their life purpose. Then guess what? That takes less than 30 seconds, but it also is a situation where now they're going to come at me and say to me, how are you going to do that? Well, I've got e-learning courses. I've got an e-book. And in those products, it really lays out to you the steps that you need to take to find your life purpose, to first understand what your natural communication or behavioral pattern is, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, how you're going to go and apply your strengths and use that to get your business where you want it to be, but you're going to put the the mission in place for your business and take it from where you are now to where you want to be. This is often how people get together and work as a team. Because remember, there's the creator, the advancer, the refiner, and the enforcer. You're listening to Live Without Limits. We're coming to you live from BBM and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back, we will be talking 
about how to never be afraid to make mistakes and seek help. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Service Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her book and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Welcome back. I'm your host, Davida Shinsky. You're listening to Live Without Limits. We're coming to you live from BBM and TuneIn Radio. Never be afraid to make mistakes or seek help. Always remember this. this, There may be 10 different ways to do something. And I remember, what was it? Someone said, Albert Einstein, it took him 10,000 ways to to come up with the solution. And he said, what he basically said was, I found out 10,000 different ways to do something before I came up with the solution. So always remember that if something doesn't work, always look for another way to do it. When you are responsible for your actions and decisions to drive your business, you're bound to make mistakes. You must never be afraid to recognize your mistakes and address them. And when required, a mistake or wrong decision that we address today will enable us to minimize or negotiate the impact on your business and also equip us to deal with such circumstances in the future. In this regard, when we are at a crossroad, unable to decide which way to go, we must not be hesitant to seek help from anyone around us who may have relevant experience to deal with such a situation. Making mistakes is just a part of the learning process of being an entrepreneur and growing a business. This is why it's important to have a mentor and a team of people to work with you to help you. Most businesses fail because the founder wants all the glory for its success and refuses to ask for help. This is why you look to professionals and not friends. SCORE is an organization of retired business owners who know what it takes to build a business. And let's look at it this way. You've got the creator. You've got the advancer. You've got the refiner. You've got the enforcer. And you've got the facilitator. And 
what happens is people will go on retreats where it's an obstacle course that they have to learn to work together as a team to overcome the obstacle course. Why is the purpose of this? To help them work together as a team. This way, when they go back to their companies as leaders, they learn how to work together, how to listen to each other, how to really communicate because often we don't communicate effectively and we don't want to listen to each other. And when that happens, there's so much competing op- competition between all, everyone that what happens is no one does anything. And I can tell you that often I've talked to people who have attempted to start a nonprofit organization. And part of having a nonprofit organization is having people on your team that knows how to raise money. That's why if you ever listen to successful nonprofit organizations, what have they done? They've gone to corporations. They've looked for leaders within those corporations to be on their board. Why? Because if you look at it this way, each of us has 230 people that are our closest friends. And as you expand out that from each of those 230 people, there's another 230 people. And then there's another 230 people. But if you're including only your friends to help you with the organization, they may have good intentions, but they don't have the connections that people who work in business do. And those connections, that what they do is help you to connect with someone who not just has an interest in what you're doing, but has the funds to help you take your business from where you are now to where you want to be. And when you look at a nonprofit organization and you look at those that have failed and you look at the ones that have succeeded, what has been the reason that they have succeeded? Now, look at the Girl Scouts. And I grew up in Savannah, Georgia, which is the home of the Juliet Gordon Lowe home. And Juliet Gordon Lowe is founded the Girl Scouts, and every city has a chapter. Every region has a regional leader. Every state has a state leader. All these leaders get together, and they work, and they figure out how and what the expectations are for each chapter because guess what? When you are looking at selling Girl Scout cookies like they do in the month of January, and even the Boy Scouts sell popcorn, what does that do? That it's not just when I was a child that you went door-to-door selling your cookies and getting orders, but today they actually go in front of certain grocery stores that they have gone to and gotten the approval to set up a table over to the side. And what are they doing? They're teaching the kids, the young girls, how to communicate what the product is, how they want to sell it, and they get it into your hands. And one of the things I've noticed is they even put the product out where you can taste it. Because guess what that's going to do? Once you taste it, you're going to know you want to buy it. I'm your host, Davida Shinsky. This is Live Without Limits. And we're coming to you from BBM and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about how to be aware of your finances and its associated risks. America is out of control. 
Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact a symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside, you know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416 529 7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well, be aware, be magical. Welcome back. I'm Davina Shinsky. This is Live Without Limits, and we're on BBM and TuneIn Radio. Be aware of your finances and its associated risks. As an old saying goes, never put all your eggs in one basket. The first and foremost action plan for any new business is to identify the sources and the right mix of funds that would infuse life into your business plan. Begin with, we must detail out the financial plan and identify the phases as to when and how much we need to invest in each phase to grow the business. This is why creating a business plan is of utmost importance. Keep your business expenses lean every step of the way and be sensible by making the right investments in functions like accounting. Have a good CA so you know the status of the money at all times. At the onset of itself, our focus should be to mitigate the identified financial risk and tactfully embed provisions for unforeseen ones. To conclude, everybody wants to be their own boss, but my advice is don't rush into it. Take your time. Wait until you're fully ready for it. If you need experience, join a company in a singular or similar field to what you want to do. Don't jump onto the entrepreneurship bandwagon just because it's a cool thing to do. It not only requires immense hard work and lots of stress where you ought to feel alone, but also a lot of sleepless nights when opening a brick and mortar store you need anywhere from two hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand dollars in the bank just to cover expenses before you even open the doors to customers to cover repairs in the area being used, stocking the products, plus hiring and training of staff in addition to rent and utilities. When starting an online business, you're usually working from home as a solopreneur or entrepreneur, and the cost can be a lot lower or only as low as $500 to get started, but you would need to have 
enough to cover expenses for your rent and mortgage, utilities, and so on. The advantage of working from home is that you get tax breaks for working from home. Now, when I started my business back in 1983, I really didn't have any options available to me because if I wanted to work, I was usually doing telemarketing jobs. And in telemarketing jobs, at that time, I was never making more than six, seven dollars an hour. And my problem is that I like to do and move around. I don't like sitting still for anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes for any length of time. And when you're working in telemarketing, not only that, you have to be able to dial numbers very quickly because they want you to make at least 50 to 100 calls every hour because they figure out of every 10 calls, you get two that you contact and maybe one that will actually purchase. So always remember that working from home and having your own business is not an easy task, but here's the kicker. Today, what happens is that many of the companies outsource their jobs. I remember that I was living in Atlanta and in an apartment complex. And my neighbor that lived across the hall, she had a friend that came into town. And what her friend was doing was she went and interviewed with a company that was a collection agency. And what they did was rather than having her come and work in the office, what they did was they were able to give her the computer and the phone All she had to do was go and set up the internet service and the phone service. That way, what they were doing was whenever the calls came in, they were redirecting those calls. All she had to do was tell them what day she wanted off. This allowed the company now to stay open seven days a week and to The only requirement they had was on the days that you work, you had to be sitting at your desk between the set amount of time. And in doing so, then you were the customers were going into your was rerouted so that what you were able to do was work with the customer and they often put a time limit on you because they really want you to reach and help as many customers as possible but it really is a a a trend you're finding that Comcast that Apple many of the large corporations even the insurance companies Humana What they are doing is they're going through the temp agencies today and they're having the temp agencies post openings. And if you see a company listed in the temp agency, then you register for the training and you have to pay for the training. Then once you finish the training and get certification, then What you do is you go log online into the company's mainframe, and then you will be servicing as a customer service their customers. Recently, when I called Humana to do my monthly over-the-counter order, I actually got someone that was working from home, and This is a trend that we're seeing more of because guess what? That does allow you your tax breaks. I'm your host, Davina Shinsky. You're listening to Live Without Limits, and we're coming to you live from BBM and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back in this last segment, we're going to review what we talked about today. Are you stressed? Is your stress driving you crazy? Do you know there are many ways to relieve the stress? 
The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic does just that. Reduce your stress plus so much more. Established in 1997, the Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic offers an approach to wellness. For those individuals who choose to either utilize appropriate complementary methods to enhance their current medical care, or to those individuals who are on their personal journey toward improved health and wellness through the use of therapeutic bodywork, Reiki energy healing, or hypnosis. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic is owned by Dr. Judy Dean, a registered nurse and board-certified massage therapist and medical hypnotherapist in LaPorte, Indiana. Visit www.spiritwithinmassage-hypnosis.com to see all services offered by Dr. Judy. For a free personal consultation, please call Dr. Judy Dean at 219-326-1380. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic, 219-326-1380. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. Welcome back. I'm your host, Davida Shinsky. You're listening to Live Without Limits. And we're coming to you live from BBN and TuneIn Radio. And what we're going to do is talk about how review some of the things that we talked about. And the first thing we talked about was how to create a plan and follow it. Creating a well-thought-out business plan to start with and the initial steps that may seem pointless to some but it's strongly advisable to spend time on your business plan. One of the reasons you want to do that is because your business plan helps you stay determined and focused so that you know exactly what you're doing. And remember that there may be mistakes, but that those mistakes are your learning curve because you learn what doesn't work And you also learn what does work. And it helps you stay focused to the point that you understand each day what you need to do to help you reach that end goal. And reaching that end goal is always what you need to understand. And how you set goals is you feel them And how you feel them is you write down your goals. Then you understand them. Then you look at how you can take action. Once you start to take action, then you want to share those goals. Why? Because when you share it, then you're helping yourself understand what it is, the plan is, and how to implement it. Then you want to establish a long-term network of trust. The purpose of having that network is that you're having a support system that is there to encourage you, and you're putting together a team of people that are experts. And what that team of experts does is they input information so that you can take it and refine it and always look at what you don't know, someone else knows. And when you put all those ingredients together, then what you're doing is setting yourself up for success. Well, What we do individually may not be the right things, but if we get someone else's input that understands it, 
that's already been there and done that, then they can help us so that we don't have to worry about loss of income. And remember, you never want to be afraid to make mistakes or seek help. The importance of that is that when you are responsible for your actions and decisions to drive your business, you are bound to make mistakes. But if you have someone to help you to recognize those mistakes and recon- and actually address them, then what you're doing is helping yourself set up a learning curve because that learning curve is what's going to help you reach your final destination. That no matter what business you're in, everything has to be a a learning, a curve of how you're going to get there. And everyone wants to be their own boss, but remember this, take your time, wait until you're fully ready for it, and then put all the things together so that you can make it work. And when we come back next week, we're going to talk about the tactics that you can implement to become an elite entrepreneur. Because once you have the learning curve of putting it all together, then you can be a very successful. This has been Live Without Limits with host Davida Shensky. Join the conversation each week as Davida will talk careers, entrepreneurship, communication, and leadership. Don't dream about your career. Let Davida help you get there on Live Without Limits. Listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.